Good evening or good morning if you're in Canada. I'm Yankee Berger, I'm in Sydney, Australia, and it's a, it's a great schus to learn this uh, Gemara, which we're going to uh, learn now in memory of the Zech Nishmas, my dear father, whose 10th year set is coming up in just a few days. So let's get uh, straight into it. This is Mesech Des Tamid, Daf Lamed Amad Beis, the fourth chapter of Mesech Des Tamid. So this Mesech, as you know, deals with the Tamid, the daily sacrifice, the daily offering that will be offered in the morning and in the afternoon. The Gemara, the Mishnah that we're going to learn now, it's quite a lengthy Mishnah. It graphically describes what would happen to the animal on a daily basis. So let's get uh, straight into it. They wouldn't tie up the four legs of the animal as it was normally done, but they would be makidin, comes from the word akeda, like they did it by the akeda, the akeda style, where the right leg, the front leg, and the and the back leg, and the left front leg, I bet, and the left uh, uh, hind leg would be tied up together. Whoever won the privilege, the pious, you know, every day there was a pious, there was a a raffle. They would draw lots. Who would do what? Which Kohani would do what in the base of Mikdash? So the one who won the privilege to carry the the uh, the lamb would actually hold it during hold it down during its uh, when it would be when it would be slaughtered. Vakachayaki does say this is how it was held during its uh, during its uh, binding. Roish Adarm, Its head was pointed southward. The front of the and Its face was face was facing west. Mashuchet. And the shechet would stand the mizrach eastward in front of the mirv, and his face was towards the west. Now this was done twice a day. Shal shachar the morning tamid, hayanishchat al keren tzvanis ma'rovis. It was uh, slaughtered near the northwest corner of the mizbeach, al tabashni on the second ring away from the mizbeach. There were many rings attached to the floor near the altar, and uh, this is the second ring. From the Mizbeach Shabin Arbayim, the afternoon one, the afternoon uh, uh, offering, Nishchat Akher Mizrach was uh, slaughtered on the northeast corner. And the Gemara is going to talk about later on why it was done in, in, in these uh, in these particular rings. Now the Mishnah continues as follows, and again graphically describes what would happen. Shachat Asher Chetikibel Makabelus. The one who slaughtered the animal, animal would do so, and then the receiver would receive the blood. The Torah tells us that when they would offer this daily offering, after they killed the animal, they'd have to take the blood and sprinkle it over the mizbeach, over the altar. So the receiver would receive the blood, and the coin who would receive the blood, he would he'd come to the northeast corner of the mizbeach, and he would sprinkle the blood to the east side and to the north side of the Mizbeach. Then he would circle the Mizbeach, Maravis Dremis, uh, the southern west side corner, Venoisin Maravis Drema, and he applied the blood, he put the, the, the blood on the southern west side of the Mizbeach. The remainder of the blood would be, would be uh, poured, would be poured on the south side of the Mizbeach. Now the Mishnah goes on to describe in graphic detail how they would dismember the animal and how they would, uh, what would they, what they, they would do with the body of the animal after it was slaughtered and after the blood was sprinkled on the Mizbeach. Okay, so they had to hang up the tummy, they, they hang up the animal. Now traditionally, animals would be hung and then uh, Dismembered, uh, dissected, uh, but they were hung with their by their uh, by their leg. That's what uh, that's what they would do. That's what butchers would do. So it says the mission says that the daily carbon would not. You wouldn't break its. You wouldn't break its leg as normally the custom was and hang it. Rather. Uh, you'd make a hole in its knee with toilet boy, and you'd hang it from this hole from a hook on the on the wall. Then they would skin the animal, the the, the uh, lamb, until it reached its uh, its breast. 
when it reached the, the breast, they cut off the head, and the son of the Mishnah they give it to the Koyan who won the pious, so won the, the uh, that day, the, uh, uh, the, the uh, raffle, the lottery, to carry. They cut off the, they cut off the four feet, and son of the Mishnah then they give it to the one who won the, who won the, 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 uh, the privilege to, to, uh, to do that. America's a half sheath, and they finished, then they had finished skinning the entire animal. Okay. Korah Salev, and they tear open the heart, and they remove the blood, and they cut off the, the uh, legs, the four legs, and the they give it to the one who won the, the raffle that day, to, uh, they give it to, to that person. Although the regal, they went up to the uh, right. The right leg, they cut it off, they gave it to the one who won the raffle. Do that, and the two, the two baits him with it. He then, took, they, he would then tear open. Again, this is describing how they would dismember the animal. They then tore open, uh, and everything was revealed. The entire inside of the animal was revealed. They took a fat. They placed it over the place where the animal was slaughtered. Not only at the carvan, they took the intestine and the zolim ben ladichon, and they gave it to the one who won the raffle that day to uh, to rinse them. Now, how would they rinse the animal? Okay, as the stomach, they'd rinse it in the the, the rinsing uh, room, the rinsing uh, chamber. And they rinse it as much as it needs. But the intestines, they'd have to rinse at least three times on the special marble tables which were between the pillars, which, pillars, which is going to, the Gemara is going to talk about uh, shortly. And the Mishnah now continues. Note also, Saka the Kohen took the knife in his hand again and separated the lungs from the liver. The etzbak hakovim in hakovim, and the liver appendage from the liver, loya mizizim koyma, and they would pull it out of its place. Nugav as a chazal, the son of Mishnah Zachaba, they pierce the chazal, the 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 breast, and give it to, again the one who won that, the the, the won the lotto that day to to do it. Ola doifan yamonis, they went up to the to the top right uh, inside of the animal. He choisach v'yod ad shidra, and the cut going down to the spine. Loya negev shidra, they would not touch the actual spine. Then they cut, they they cut it, they uh, cut it off and give it to the one again who won the lotto that day to do it. So again, there was a, before this whole process started, the Kohanim would have a big lotto and they divide all the the jobs and uh, and any every particular every day the various Kohanim had particular jobs based on the what came up in the pious in the lotto. Okay, Bala Lagera, then they approached the neck, Mirpa Shtit Slois Mekan, the two soft ribs from its side, Shtit Slois Mekan, and the two soft ribs from the other side, Chasachan and Salamish Zahaba, they cut off the, this whole section and gave it to the one who won the, who, whose job was it, whose jo- who, who won the lotto that day. Vareat Fluim Hakonev Ale Vareat Fluim Ba. And the, the heart and the lungs were still. Connected, hanging off of it. Bolo Devon Asmolis. Then, they then came to the left side. The left side. Yichpur Shteit Sloyis Takis Rakis Bamalad. And they he left the two soft ribs beneath it. Vakachay Manich Bechavita. And the same he do to the other side. Dinzer Manich Shteim Shteim Bamalad. So he'd leave um, the two ribs on the right and the two and. And on the left, above it, Shtaim Shtaim the Mata, and the two on the right, the two on the left, Chasachan Vanasla Mishazachaba. He would cut it off and give it to the one again who won, whose job was that for uh, for for that particular day. Vashid went the spine together with Vatchol Tolibo, and the spleen that was suspended, that was hanging on it. Again, this is graphic detail of how they uh, deal with the animal on a daily basis. Bala um, Oikets, 
He approached the the oikitz, which is the the back. They cut it off and gave it again. The one who whose job was for that day to uh, deal with that part of the animal. Covered which they close in with the fatty tail, the liver, and the two kidneys were together with it. Not the circle, smallest, and solemn mishazachba. And they took the last remaining piece, the left leg, and gave it to who uh, the one who who's, who had the lotto on that day to do this uh, particular job. Now the Mishnah tells us it lists the kahanim, all the kahanim, and the limbs that they we're holding. So now that everything was cut off, the animal was completely dismembered, they'd all stand in a row, and the limbs of the animal would be in their hands. And again, it's going to list who held what. The first koyen, harishoyen, baroish of regal, he stood with the head and the regal and the leg. And the leg. Or she says it was the, the uh, back leg. Harosh bimina, the head was in his right hand, uh, and its nose was facing its arm, meaning it was it was upside down. It's because of its horns between his fingers. Basically, and uh, where the slaughter took place, that was above. And the fat was placed on it. And the right leg was in his uh, was in his left hand. And the side where the skin was, was lachutz was facing on the outside. That was the first coin. The second coin, Hashemi um, He stood with the two with the two uh, legs, the four legs. the right one in the in the right hand, the small but smaller, the left one in his left hand, face or lachutz. And where the skin was, was in the outside. The third koyen, Ashlishi Boykas of Regal, with the back and the regal and the 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 uh, the leg, Oikas Bimino, the back portion in his right hand, the Halyum and the Dell's been exposed and the and the tail was was like was hanging between his his fingers. And the the, the liver and the two kidneys were attached. The left leg in his left hand, and the side where the skin was, was in the outward, was in, in, was in the outside. The fourth coin, he stood with the with the breast and the neck, the breast was in his right hand, the neck was in his left hand. And the, the, the soft ribs were between, were hanging, were between his fingers. Hamishi, the fifth coin, stayed the funnest. He stood between the two flanks. Shayamim b'minovish, shasmoly b'smoly. The right um, in his right hand, the left in his right hand, face on the chutz, and the sides where the skin was in facing outside. The sixth coin, Hashishi b'kavayim nesim b'vazef, with the with the innards placed. Uh, it was in a, it was actually in a in a bucket. Uchrayim agamim l'mala, and the feet were on top. The seventh and the eighth and the ninth Kohanim says Hashviz. Now they, they weren't holding the animal parts, but the other parts that came with the daily offering. So the seventh Kohen, he stood with the flower, which was the, it was called the Mincha, the, the, the Mincha that came with the daily sacrifice. Hashmin the eighth Kohen stood with the Chavitin, and Hashiba Yah in the ninth came with the, with the wine, which was the libation which they pour with the daily sacrifice on the on the uh, Mizbeach. Now, the end of the Mishnah, this is all from the beginning, we've, we've only we've only learned the Mishnah. Again, this Mishnah is very, very graphic and very detailed. Uh, so the Mishnah continues, Holchun and Sonim, the, the first six Kohanim who had the the animal parts in their hands, they went, and Sonim, and they put the, they put what they had, um, they went and they put it on the kevish. There's a ramp on the mizbech, and they, in mid ramp, on the west side, malachim, and they'd salt. They'd salt all these items. We know that uh, meat was always salted, and uh, primarily to extract the blood because one does not eat uh, blood. 
And then these Kohanim, when they came, they come down off the ramp, they go to the Lishka Sagazis, which is a special chamber uh, in, in the Beis Amikdash, and they go there, it says, Likras Shema, since it was the morning, and there's a limit to what time uh, the latest you can recite the Shema, so they go and they recite the Shema. So this was all the Mishnah describing in detail what happened to the daily offering. Let's get straight into the Gemara. Okay, so the Gemara looks at this Mishnah, and it looks at the very first point that we made. The Mishnah began, the Mishnah which we learned began with uh, telling us that they wouldn't tie up the animal the four, by its four legs like normally would be done, but they'd do it like the Akeda. So the Gemara points out, Tana, we learned in a Brise, Yad Varegel, Kakedis, Yitzhak, but Avram, They'd bind up the daily offering, yad v'regel, its hand and leg, meaning its its uh, front leg and its hind leg, like the akeda of Yitzchak ben Avram. As the Mishnah says, lo hayu koisfin they would not tie up the four legs as normally, uh, conventionally would be done. So the Gemara now asks, my Tama, what's the reason? Why wouldn't they do it like the conventional way to tie up all the four legs? The Gemara says, Rav Huna and Rav Chizda, there are two reasons. Rav Huna and Rav Chizda, Chadama, one says that the reason that they would not tie up the legs of the Tamid, of the, of the daily offering, in the usual way, all four legs, because they did not want to uh, uh, disgrace something that is sanctified. Um, how would it be uh, a disgrace? How would it be a disgrace? Because just tying up the four legs as normally done, as normally done, that's a disgrace. That's making something, you're making it very mundane. Uh, taking from something that's holy, you're making it mundane. The Chadamran, and the other one says, it gives another reason, because by doing, by doing this, by tying the four legs, you're acting in accordance to, this is, this is, what they, that, this is what they would do uh, when they would serve their idols. So Gemara asked, my Bane, what's the difference between these two reasons, these two, these two reasons that were just given, Ikibin Ayu, there is a difference. What's the difference? The chaste b'shiroi, which means, what if they tie up all four legs with shiroi, with a uh, silk? So, so there's no bazillion kachim, there's no disgrace to the sacrifice, you're doing it in a very, uh, in, in an honorable way. But you're still tying the four legs, like like the like the idol worship worshippers do. So that would be a difference between both of the reasons. Inami, or or another another uh, difference would be if, if you tie it up with gold cords, if you did So it wouldn't be a disgrace for the kachim for the sacrifices, but still it would be following the ways of. The uh, the idol worshippers, and now the Gemara is going to is gonna, we we mentioned about the about the table that was made out of marble. So the Gemara is going to now zoom in on this. So the Gemara says, "Not awesome." We learned in the Mishnah, say There were thirteen tables in the base of Mikdash. Shmona shall shayis the base of Eight of them were made out of marble in the base of Mitzrayim, which is the area of of where they would. Uh, would they would slaughter the animals? And on these on these tables, on these eight tables, they would rinse the intestines, as we mentioned earlier in the Mishnah, that they have to go through the rinse the intestines three times. Now it tells you in detail where they were now where the other one, where the other uh, tables were. Two were on the west side of the ramp. One was made out of marble. The other one was made out of uh, was made out of uh, silver. The one that was made out of marble, on it they placed the various uh, limbs, and the, on the silver one, they place clay uh, shores, the various um, vessels that would help serve, uh, that they would use in the base of Mikdash. Uva Ulam, and in the Ulam, which is the big chamber, Shnaim Mifnim, Apes Rabais, um, there were two, two more. Again, they're listing all the uh, uh, his mission is listing all the all the tables. Two tables, um, bifnim al pesach 
We're next to the doorway of of the we're next to the doy, one was made of silver, one was made of gold. Uh, what were they used for? Uh, the one the one on uh, the, the silver one, they would place the lechem aponim, which were the showbreads, special showbreads which they which they had on in, in the base of Mikdash, uh, when entering. And when they came out, they put them on the gold ones. So two different tables, silver and gold, one Upon entering, a one when they when they came out. So why do they need to? So there's a rule that when it comes to kodesh, comes to holy matters, you you um, go up, you ascend, and you don't go down. Therefore, it began. They started with a silver table, and after that, when it came out, it was a gold table. The echet and there was one more table of gold. Um, Inside, it was inside the the uh, inside the sanctuary. And on it was the lechem atomi. With lechem aponim, were the uh, showbreads, were, which were constantly there. So now the Gemara has uh, a question. The Gemara is going to ask, why were there marble tables in the base of Mikdash? We know it was Hashem's home. And everything was very lavish. Things were made out of gold and silver and copper. Why marble? So Michdi, let us see. Ein anis makamashirs. There's a rule that there should. There's no uh, poorness or poverty in the place of wealth. And the base of Mikdash was a place of wealth. So amai avli the shash. Why did they make tables out of marble? That did the kesef and that They should just make them out of gold and silver, silver and gold. The Gemara answers. Omrav Huna. Omrav Chinin. Abishem Rav Asi. Rabbi Asi b'shem Rabbi Shmuel, so Rabbi Chinnan, the name of Rabbi Asi, Rabbi Asi, said the name of Rabbi Shmuel Barav Yitzchak, Bnei Shumatiach, because meat was placed on these tables, and if they were placed on gold or silver, um, remember if it was if it was warm, if it was hot, so the, the the gold and silver would become warm, and the meat would spoil. Marble naturally stays cold, so it was better for the meat to be on a marble table. So now the Gemara is going to say, Gemara is going to, going to focus on another part of the Mishnah. We learned earlier, Shashachar Yenishlik Akher Mizrach Yitzvanis Maravis. We learned earlier that the morning, the morning tummy, the morning offering was uh, offered, was slaughtered at the northwest corner of the Beis HaMikdash. And we read on the second ring. And so the Gemara is going to now ask a question. The Gemara asked, "No, where do we know these? Where do we know this from? This this exact position where the morning was offered, and again, the in the after, in the afternoon, the afternoon offering was offered uh, uh, on the other side, also on the second ring, but it was also uh, was offered on the on the northeast side. So, how do we know this? Because this the, is the, the 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 pasuk, the Torah tells us when it talks to when it tells us about the the daily offerings, Shnaim la Shnaim layoim, which literally means um, two for the day. Two for the day. Now, two for the day literally means two for the day, the morning and the afternoon. The Gemara says it also means kinegadiyoim, opposite the yoim, opposite the day. Now, the word yoim, it means day. It also can mean sunlight. So the morning offering, the morning offering was done in the northwest corner because in the morning that's it that was the place where the sun was shining and because the Torah says Shnaim la Yoim the Gemara is interpreting that it also means connected Yom opposite the day meaning opposite in, in the ray of sun opposite the Yoim the, the, the ray of sun and that's why in the morning it was done that's where the sun was shining now the Gemara also is going to quote a Brice Tanya Namahoki there's a, there's a Bryce that backs this up. Shnaim Layoim. It quotes this pasuk Shnaim two for the day. And the Bryce says, Kinegadiyim opposite the day, meaning opposite the ray of sun. Ata You could say, you could say that, no, it doesn't mean opposite the day, opposite the ray of sun, but it, perhaps it means, um, uh, it means, Ata Maybe it means, 
uh, the obligation of the day, two sacrifices every day. Because that, when you look at the, at the Pasuk, that's what you look at the verse, that's what it really, that's what it's telling you. So the says, no, I'm there, when it says, the Torah already tells us that one lamb in the morning and one lamb in the afternoon. So, that means the obligation to do it twice a day, the Torah already told you. So, why does it continue to say, Shnaim Layoim? Therefore, when it says Shnaim Layoim after that, negative must mean negative opposite the day, meaning in the ray of sun. Because to tell us that twice a day, it already told us. Hokeitza. So, how do you do it in the ray of sun? So, here we, we, we go back to our Mishnah where it was positioned. Talmud Shashachar, Yenishkat Alker, and Swain, it's the morning. Was the morning offering was done uh, on the northwest corner because that's where the ray of sun was shining in the morning. And the afternoon was done on the northeast corner because that was, that's where it was shining. The sun was shining at that uh, at that time of the day, the afternoon.